welcome to the Today Show on the Disability Channel. I am your host, Unstoppable Tracy, and I am super excited because today we have a very unique story. There is this amazing new product out there. It's a Justice Toolkit, and here to talk about it with me is my friend and fellow committee member. We both serve on the Toronto Police Services board of directors representing vulnerable folks and Melissa's from BIST, B-I-S-T, the Brain Injury Society of Toronto, I believe is what it stands for. So I'd like to say welcome, Melissa. Thank you so much, Tracy. I'm so, I'm so happy to be here. I love, I love your energy. I love being in anything that involves you. So thank you so much for having me on. I'm uh, very grateful. I think there's no coincidence that, that Vigar rhymes with tiger. Because it's like, we have matching energies. We just have, I'm like a, a blonde red and you're a dark red. And, and we just like tiger into making an impact out there. And you are extraordinary. I was so excited when you told me about this new Justice Toolkit. So before we jump into it, can you let people know about FIST? Oh, happily. Uh, so FIST is, as Tracy said, it's the Brain and Tree Society of Toronto. We're a nonprofit organization. Uh, so we service uh, people with brain injuries uh, throughout Toronto, along with their family members. Um, I know this isn't just a Toronto broadcast, so I, I will say that um, most association or most uh, places, uh, Peel Halton, um, York Region, um, there's a lot of provincial organizations as well. So if you need to get connected with support, uh, please, you know, you can look at the Ontario Brain Injury Association or via website. Um, and that'll direct you to your local brain injury association. Um, or you can always contact us at FIST and we'll help get you connected with the supports wherever you are. Um, different associations offer different things. So uh, it'll you know, depend where you live and, and what supports are offered, but certainly it's, it's worth reaching out to your local association. And what kind of help would people reach out for? Like, who are your typical folks reaching out? Yeah, so um, of course, right now we're all virtual. So you can actually access uh, supports from any organization that are offering things online. So um, I know Peel Halton has a really great youth program that they're running. Uh, this We run in different support groups. We have a, a women's support group. We have a trauma-informed group for people who sustain their brain injury um, because of an uh, act of violence or assault. Uh, we have a men's social drop in. Um, and then throughout the province as well, there's also a peer support program, which is pretty incredible. So it matches uh, individuals uh, who either have sustained a brain injury or maybe a caregiver or a family member uh, with a peer support, with a peer mentor somewhere else in the province. So it's a really great, great program, and like I said, most associations across the province are are involved in it. Uh, I mean, there's so many options, so many programs, and a lot of folks I think exponentially are feeling isolated and having needs out there with that are underserviced. For people with disabilities, it's exponential right now. So it is like mind blowing that you've got all these services all over Ontario right now. That's fabulous. Yeah, yeah. Most of the associations are still operating. Everybody went virtual. I mean, there is always the concern that a lot of our folks might not have access to technology. So I know across the province, again, different associations are working to try and get people connected with, we're doing, like at this, we're doing a technology drive. Um, I know our association and others are doing um, educational set, um, sessions or we have a community facilitator who's helping connect people to technology to help them learn how to actually use this stuff that before COVID they might not have ever had to use, right? So yeah. it's a different world and, and you know there are some people who have been left behind and we're very cognizant of that and we make sure we're kind of bridging that gap where we can. The technology drive, massive, super important everybody. Yeah, we'll take any donation. <laughs> yes, I don't know why I'm yelling that, but I am. Yeah, because it's passionate, it is important. And, and it's so fun because you and I are in the studio together, but because of social distancing, we're on other sides of the studio, but on Zoom, which is kind of fun. Yeah. But what's really fun, and I don't know about fun is a fun word, but I'm excited by the newest toolkit, your justice toolkit. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of people realize the need and the prevalence uh, for that gave birth to this toolkit. Can you give us a little bit of background on how this came to fruition? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're super excited about it. It actually just launched uh, 
two weeks ago, or about a week and a half ago. <laughs> so abijustice.org, it's a free toolkit. Uh, it's out there for anybody to use. Um, so essentially there is a high prevalence of folks with brain injuries who um, get involved in the criminal justice system. Um, and unfortunately, because brain injury is an invisible disability, um, and, and sometimes can be misinterpreted as mental health. Um, certainly there is an overlap. A lot of folks with brain injury have mental health, uh, but they also have different challenges that need different supports. Um, and when that's not provided, um, our folks get in a lot of, a lot of trouble. Um, so in Ontario alone, there was a study that was done that um, individuals with brain injury are two and a half times more likely to be incarcerated than those without brain injury. Oh. And really what that says to us is that they really don't have the ability to navigate the system the same way somebody without um, a cognitive or communication challenge might. Yeah. Um, so at FISC, we've certainly supported a lot of individuals uh, through the justice system and, and we recognize kind of where the gaps in knowledge are. Um, so we got funding from the Law Foundation of Ontario. We put in a proposal. Great. Um, and we're super happy that we received this fund. So it's it's been a lot of work in progress, and you know we've certainly had a lot of um, create, like co contributors involved. So it's it's I know I'm speaking about it, but I'm certainly speaking on behalf of uh, Mary Pera at our office, who's done a lot of work. Uh, Katie Maninkas was another partner on this project, um, and we had you know a ton of professionals involved as well. So we've created this toolkit. You can go on there. There's uh, two portals: one for the law community, one for the Brain injury community, um, and each portal will take you into different um, different resources, different tools, um, different. There's we have videos um, that really tries to break down the process, um, as well as provide education on brain injury. Abijustice.org. Yes. yes. Abijustice.org. Abijustice.org, and anybody can use this learning, right? Yes. Yes. Which is fabulous, because. We also know maybe you don't have a brain injury yourself, but possibly your neighbor or a family member or someone you know in the workplace, right? It, it connects. Do you have stats on, you know, how many people have acquired brain injuries? I do. Well, <laughs> look at that. I'm so lucky. This is why she's the lucky yeah. one. <laughs> no, well, so there's about half a million people living in Canada with a brain injury. Um, we know... Um, that men, so right now the literature talks about men sustaining brain injuries more than women. Okay. But we do, what I always want to speak to is, is the people who are not getting counted in those numbers. Uh, so we know there's a lot of uh, victims of intimate partner violence who've sustained head injuries, um, but again, not necessarily diagnosed, not treated for. Uh, we also know in, in Toronto, if I just speak to our city, um, a, a huge percentage of the homeless population has sustained a brain injury, so um, it's over 50%. Um, and the, the really wor worrisome thing about that is um, about 80% of those people became homeless after their brain injury. Right. So if we really want to look at how one instance can um, impact someone's life in a devastating way, just looking at that number, we know that there's a gap. We know that supports aren't in place to help folks after they sustain the injury, and then there's a kind of cascading effect uh, which really affects their lives. But yeah, and, and society, because there's a cost to it too, right? You look at the cost of shelters and, and hospital beds, um, and then, you know, again, being involved in the prison system, right? There's a cost to all these things. So looking at where we can prevent this and provide that education and advocacy, is, it's, it's really near and dear to us at this. And so where abijustice.org comes in yes. to the, the mix is help be preventative along yes. the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're... You know, if I could do a plug, yeah. uh, <laughs> we're we're doing a bunch of trainings on this on this toolkit, um, and in the training, obviously, we, we showcase what you know what's been developed, uh, but we also talk about like you're asking the stats um, and things like that, and and where people can get involved. Um, so we are we have a bunch of trainings up until March, but we're also happy to do custom trainings. So uh, I think my contact information might be here, and Viger at vis.ca. Uh, reach out if you want to book a training with us, because we're certainly passionate about this happy to talk to anybody about it. And, and, it's free. and it's free. And it's free. Exactly. Yes. There's no okay. cost to this particular resource or to get this training brought right now customized before March because that's all part of the funding that you receive. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and because the funding, you know, when we got the proposal, the world was still open. So, yeah, you know, we were going to be like driving across the province, you know, spreading the good word. 
uh, but now we're doing it from our kitchen tables, which is fine, and it also opens it up to more people, so anyone across the province can attend it at any time. It's fabulous. It's, what's your favorite part about the program so far? We've had a really good response. You never know when you're developing this. Like, you know, is it in your own head? Like, you talk to people and, and there's interest, but, you know, is that lip service? Yeah. Um, but we've had, we've probably had over 400 people like attend the training so far. Um, and we just, I was literally running here. Just <laughs> doing one this, this afternoon. And yeah. it's coming in, my email is going off with a couple more people wanting. So clearly there's a need. It is um, hot. Yeah, there's there's a need, and, and you know we're so we're so grateful to do this. And you know the other piece I always want to say is, you know we're we're experts, not experts, but you know we know a lot about what we do. Uh, but I love doing these trainings so that people can also give us their resources um, and their tip. And you know we're still modifying and updating the website. It is live, but we're happy to have feedback from other people to incorporate it in because uh, we're learning as well as we go along. Right, we're all on this kind of journey together. Oh yeah. So, so how did you end up working at BIST? Oh, that's a, a, a left field question. <laughs> I'm looking off camera to you over across the room. I know, so I know. Uh, It's hard, I'm just going to say, it's hard being in the same space as you and not being able to hug you. Right? Like, yeah. Like everyone, right? We're just hugging people, but it's so nice to see you. It is so nice to see you. Um, I started at BIST, I think I'm on four years in, um, but I've been working in this, I don't even want to say this, I've been working in the field of brain injury for 20 years. Yeah, um, when you were two. You sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doogie Howser, I'm a child prodigy. Yes, yes, um, yes. Yeah, no, so I, I started off working at uh, Cheers, which is a, um, uh, it's funded by the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care, and they do residential and community support for folks with brain injuries. Uh, and then I kind of went through my career, I did some private work, um, and then I landed at BIST, and I'm super happy to to be a part of it. It's such a great organization. Well, we are super happy that you joined us today for the show and celebrated and, you know, rallied with all of your phenomenal lifelines, abijustice.org, this justice toolkit for folks with brain injury because they are, you said, two times more likely to be involved with the justice system, right? Yeah, two and a half times more likely to be incarcerated than someone without a brain injury. So you can, like, again, you just see where, where it kind of starts to fall apart for our folks. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, there's the, sorry, I'm going to talk a lot, but there's also the screening piece, right? A lot of folks are going through the system and they, they haven't been diagnosed. Yeah. Um, and you might ask someone, do you have a brain injury? And they'll say, no. But then you'll say, well, have you ever lost consciousness, been hit in the head? Um, you know, a lot of victims of intimate partner violence might have been strangled, so they might be an anoxic brain injury, right? So, yeah. uh, sometimes it's just about the screening and the questioning to get people the, the right supports they need. So that's the, the other piece we're trying to make people aware of. Yes, yes, self-disclosure isn't even always something that somebody doesn't want to do. Sometimes they don't even realize that they fit in, in under these resources and these needs, but it's definitely part of, can you just imagine, if it's two and a half times more likely incarcerated, and that's only the people that are disclosed? Holy cow. Wow. We're so lucky you're here today. Please check out abijustice.org and, and be a self-taught or reach out to M Viger, B-I-G-A-R, at BIST, B-I-S-T, dot C-A. Yeah, you got it. I think I, I got disconnected, so I don't know if you can see me. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, we do not want to disconnect her, but we are going to say goodbye for now. Thank you for joining the Today Show. I'm your host, Unstoppable Tracy, and that was my extraordinary guest, Melissa Viger from BIS, Brain Injury Society of Toronto, also representing all of Ontario and the Brain Injury Society in Halton and Peel and across Ontario. So thanks for listening today. Check out abijustice.org for the Justice Toolkit. Take care, folks.